Marking matkonot? It's a piece of cake. If you're anything like me, and I know quite a few of my colleagues who are, you've been spending the last few days, not to mention the weekend, marking matkonot. So that's what I've been doing, and I've only got four left, but I wanted to take a break in order to share some of my insights with you. So there are three things that you need to have at the ready when you're ready to start marking the matkonot. The first thing, of course, are the rubrics, which you'll find on the Read Eye Test Oral Bagrut Preparation site. You can use the COBE Committee rubrics, which are the ones that are going to be used for the Bagrut itself. I recommend you use the official information ones, which are the rubrics that we prepared, which are easier to use. And they're on this site. This is in fact the only thing that I printed out. I printed out the rubrics and had them in front of me while I'm marking. There are two pages. Of course, I only printed out the page that I need for my five pointers. And there's the spreadsheet right next to it, which works according to the rubrics. And this is what my spreadsheet looks like. Be very, very sure that you're using the right level. If you're testing four points, you use the four point tab. If you're testing five points, use the five point tab because the calculations are different. The third thing that you need is the answer key which was sent to you by email. This email has a whole bunch of files. You only need the PDF file for the level and the day that your class tested. So 16487 is four points, 16587 is five points, and you see the day written here. So this file I did not print out and I did not use because it's for four points on day one. My five pointers tested most of them tested on day one, so I used this file. And one of them wasn't there, and I used the day two file for her exam. I have two screens, so I was able to not print this out. I had this on the screen while I was working. It was very convenient. If you don't have two screens, you can print it out and use the pages, and it's just as convenient. So let's see how we get started. My computer guy saved my files on my laptop, but for the per and I used it there the whole time, and that's how I graded. For the purpose of this, I transferred it to a disk on key, which I assume most of you will be using uh, in order to grade your files. So we go into the disk on key, and there's a whole bunch of numbers here. Th these are all my students. In order to find my students, I'll type in the ID number, or the ID numbers here are numerically ordered so they're easy enough to find but it's also easy enough to just start typing in the number and I found it I'm going to rename the file so it's easy for me to find it afterwards okay There is Joe. So now I want to share some of the insights that I had. First of all, the audio was really good. My kids spoke softly. We had in a computer room, we had six kids in the computer room at a time. They were spread out in the computer room. Aside from the time when, when the bells were for the end of the period were going off. And after a while, we convinced the school to cancel the bells. So aside from the sound of bells, I didn't hear any of the other kids speaking. In other words, my student's headset microphone did not pick up any of the other student noises. Uh, when I was marking, I used headphones in order to mark because my hearing isn't so great and uh, I was able to hear it perfectly with the headphones. If you remember, in a previous tutorial, I told you to tell your students not to click the stop button, not to use it as pause. If you didn't see that tutorial, you can check it out here. But I didn't really understand the significance of that. So I'm going to show you what happens when a student clicks on stop. I opened it the way that I showed you in a previous tutorial. You click on the file and you go to the standalone open 
and then you right click on the HTML file that's called the index and you tell it to open with Internet Explorer. You tell it to allow blocked content and the entire exam opens up before you. So we have the answer key and when I open up the exam I can see which answer key I'm going to want to use for this. Day 1, version 3. And I go to the answer key to version 3 of my day 1. And what I want to show you, and you have all of the answers here before you. You do not have to click on each separate file in order to mark each separate answer. But I want to show you is what happens when you're, when a student wasn't in class and didn't hear me explain that they must not use the stop button as a pause button. Or maybe they were in class and it's just so intuitive to them that they did it. I had very few students that did it, but it was very, very difficult and annoying to check. This is what happens. I clicked on my student's project presentation answer and I was using the stopwatch on my phone to time it and I realized that he only spoke for around 30 seconds. So then I realized that he'd been using the stop button as a pause button and I had to click again and again and again and he, he used it totally as a pause button and there are sections that are three seconds long and sections that are 10 seconds long and you have to keep clicking and it's a very inconvenient way to to be able to mark the tests and like I told my students the testers are professional Bagru testers and they know what they're doing but you know what you don't want to make their very difficult job harder than it already is so just follow the rules and do not click that stop button until you're finished recording Marking each test took me about 10 minutes, a, a little bit less for the stronger ones, a little bit more for the weaker ones, but all in all, it sort of evened out to an average of about 10 minutes per test. And that includes the feedback pages that I've been preparing. I have a booklet and each kid gets a feedback page. I'm smiley because I want to encourage them. Uh, I wrote things here that I know that they'll be able to use to improve mostly in their project presentation, feedback mostly for their project presentation, and also general grammar comments that I think is something that they'll be able to use when they're doing the exam. I have to say it was actually more comfortable and more convenient than sitting opposite a student who is nervous, and I actually found it a very pleasant experience marking my students say it was a much pleasanter experience than when I have to mark the matkonot face to face in class. It goes more conveniently. I can set the pace. I can do as many as I want when I want it. I felt that I was able to be a more reliable marker when I was giving the grade. If you've already gone through this experience and you have any insights to share with us that help will help others who haven't done it yet, uh, help them have an easier time of it, please share in the comments below. And if, if you're only doing it in April and May, then please watch this, learn from those of us who came before you, and wishing all of your students and you the best of luck on this Bagrut assessment. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Digitally yours. Now I'm going to finish my last four. Yalla, just do it.